I am as mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. That's a line from a movie called Network. Um, well, why am I mad? Because I feel that my eyes have been stolen from me. How is it that there has been this, my culture, my uh, clothing, my language, I'm speaking in English. Uh, yes, we are all at the receiving end of cultural colonization. And so I've been trying to go back to the way that we used to see the world. I speak about a certain period in Indian art or Eastern art, uh, Japan, China, uh, all saw the world in a certain way till the West came and said that, no, you need to see the world with perspective. You need to see it so that it looks real. You need to see it so that there is a horizon line, vanishing line. But you know what? We had actually, we were seeing the world in a way in which we looked beyond real perspective. This is a painting which is called Entertainment in a Harem Garden. It's signed by Faisullah Faizabad. It's around 1765. And it's a watercolor painting and it's about 47 by 62 centimeters, which is almost two feet by two feet. Um, and I'll read a little bit from the catalog note, which says that it has the dizzying panorama of the courtyards and gardens of a large and complex palace in one of the greatest late Mughal paintings. The main scene shows a princess with female attendants and musicians on a terrace watching a dancer skillfully balancing flasks of perfume. But the power and success of the work comes through the mesmerizing and idiosyncratic use of perspective and the sheer detail of the vast edifice, the gardens, the river, the landscape beyond. And the effect is to present the palace architecture piled like a house of cards with verticals and a variety of diagonals playing tricks of perspective across the lotusville pools and wall gardens, all leading to a sudden horizontal barrier of the river. Uh, there are worlds within worlds. Um, and as you, as you see uh, more and more of the painting, you will see, uh, just as an aside, that apart from the whole tour the force of compositional mannerisms and technical skill, right there in the background in the river, there is a horseman who is on with a lance actually killing a crocodile. And imagine in a painting that is two feet by two feet, um, what, how small that must be and how much that detail is. When I'm looking at Indian art or Eastern art or uh, Mughal paintings, uh, they're highly ornamentative. There is everything faces the camera. Uh, it's almost like all backgrounds are shot at top, top angle point of view, like a God's point of view. It's what David Hockney basically uh, said that there are seldom uh, single centers of interest. Uh, so the composition does not say, oh look, here is this hero slaying a dragon and there is one thing which is, you know, one narrative or one story. Uh, the use of multiple perspective is what allows our eyes to sort of roam, stay within where there is details. Uh, it's almost like we are within the scene and we are observing the scene with a 360 degree point of view. And yet this is without chaos. And this multiple perspective does not look wrong. And it's what David Hockney called a Western art he felt sometimes was the viewpoint of a paralyzed cyclops. It's a one-eyed creature who's paralyzed, whereas Eastern art, Indian art, looked upon the world with many eyes uh, and with a 360 degree view. Um, and this, uh, of course, is shadowless lighting. There's a lot of rasa uh, for color and drama and emotion. Uh, but the shadowless lighting, I think, is also so fascinating um, uh, that we can actually feel uh, the painting and not realize that it, it's all flat uh, in terms of the lighting. Uh, it's also got something which more and more I now call as vertical depth. We're not looking at depth in the way that the West looks at depth, which is like that, which is, oh, okay, here's the horizon line, here are trees, or here is the palace the way it should be when you look at it in real life. It's looking at depth like that. And I think that makes it so much richer and it therefore goes beyond perspective. And uh, in some ways, it's some of the street photographers that I study, uh, Raghubir Singh, William Gatney, where what happens is that um, it's as if your eye is not resting. 
your eye is led from one thing to another. Uh, the page is not turning, your eye is actually turning. And this loss of eyes that we have had about how to view these kind of paintings is what makes me passionately angry about. Professor B.N. Goswami once told me about a Sanskrit quote that said, Man will be free when he picks up space. It's like a sadhu picks deer skin and wraps it around his loins. It's an incredible quote which talks about how to use space. You don't have to use space like that. You can use space like that. And when you use space like that, and you look at the whole world, and you put it down there in one painting, I think that is a beautiful way of looking at perspective and looking at space. Uh, so Western thought says, I think therefore I am. And the East actually tried very hard not to think <laughs> and tried a lot of ways in which we can actually stop the mind and look at things in a different way. Uh, now, especially in the lockdown, uh, is a good time uh, to slow down, to look at uh, these paintings, to look deeper uh, with these paintings and to use a new way of seeing. Thank you.